there's one thought that a lot of gardeners have and it's something I've definitely had in the past and I'm constantly thinking it in order to help improve the productivity of my garden. And this video is not just about this kitchen garden, but the rest of the permaculture experimental site here at Danaronen. And if you have a garden, you will probably recognize this thought. How do I get the maximum output from my space for the minimum input? It's kind of the age old question. We're trying to find that golden ratio where we can strike that balance and feel like the, the garden or the space is working in perfect harmony. Now, obviously, a garden has multiple moving cogs at any moment in time. Some we're in control of, others less so, like the weather or the climate. But this video, I want to focus on perhaps one of the most important steps that you can take in order to create a more resilient garden. And that's looking at compost or more broadly fertility. This video is sharing the strategy that I have to make this site not need to ever buy in external compost ever again. And to also ensure that I have a system where if suddenly I can't rely on external resources like grabbing seaweed from a local beach or horse manure from a local farm, that this site would still be able to succeed and be incredibly productive. I'm going to be breaking down my three-part strategy, be chucking in tons of ideas, and I hope that this video acts as a catalyst to help make your garden not only more productive, but also more resilient. I have to apologize because this video is less about do X to get Y. It's more about asking some important questions or giving you some examples to help you practically come up with your approach. Every garden is different, every gardener is different, and we all have our own goals, challenges, opportunities with what we want to get from the space. You might have a small patio, you might have a whole farm. And so don't take everything that I say in this video as face value. I am sharing what I'm doing here. It'll be different to what you're doing, but that is part of the joy of growing your own food. It is a very creative process. You get to choose what kind of groups of plants that you wanna grow, and you can always change it. You can always adapt it. One of the most important things that I've learned about growing is that it's so important to be adaptable, to be flexible, to not get caught up into some kind of ideology that really constricts you from being able to think outside the box. And, and you have to, if you're trying to create a resilient kind of permaculture-based system. Permaculture is a design tool. It is greatly misunderstood. And my next big project is trying to kind of bring the mainstream understanding of permaculture back to its original roots as being a fantastic design tool that can be applied in almost any environment. But as I said, I'm gonna be sharing with you my thoughts, what I'm doing here in this site, and I will be posing questions or giving suggestions for you to take home. So don't think just because I'm doing it this way, you need to do it that way. There's a little bit more of a complex journey than that, but it's important to start somewhere. And I'm using this video as an opportunity to document the kind of the beginnings of this next phase of the site. And there is one core theme that encapsulates the second phase of this site. And that theme is perennials. You see, the biggest difference between this site last year and this growing season is that it's going to be growing around 50% fewer annuals. The annuals are only going to be found in one polytunnel, these beds behind me, and within the self-sufficiency garden, which I'm now turning into a permaculture kitchen garden. So I'm not only integrating far more diversity in terms of the annuals that are growing there, but also introducing many more perennials. One of the key turning points for me in the gardening journey was realizing that the relationship between you and the garden should be two-way. It shouldn't always be you working for the garden. You wanna make sure that the garden works for you. And the only way that the garden can work for you is if you know what you want it to provide for you. And so it's very easy to go all in like, oh, I need to plant this and to think that that's what you want. But the question is, what do you really want? What do you really value? Sometimes it just takes time for that to appear. For me, it's become apparent that I want this space to be as kind of low maintenance as possible, but as inspiring as possible. I want every corner that I turn to be something interesting to look at, to have lots of flavors, to grow all of the vegetables that I need, but to extend beyond that and to grow things that 
like I could never possibly buy in a shop and enjoy that. And so that is why I'm greatly reducing the amount of annuals being grown on this site. So I can really lean into what I actually want the garden to do for me. I want it to be an absolute source of flavor, inspiration, and as a nice escape. I don't want to turn up here and think, oh my gosh, I've got to go all the way down to the far corner to water the market garden. Well, we're not going to have a market garden this year. And already in this video, it's become quite apparent how powerful perennials are for this transition. And that is for a very good point. And it's because perennials don't need compost. The opportunity that I have with this site is that I have space. And so the requirement to create as much food as possible within a tiny footprint is far less. It's kind of a little bit tricky because I have got the kitchen garden and I am treating that as its own independent thing. That is not going to be reliant on anything else working within the site. But for the rest of the site, I've realized I've got space. And so it means I can change priorities. I'm not trying to pump out as much food from each square meter, but I'm trying to make sure that each square meter is as manageable as possible. And so with perennials, I've got red currants here, I've, I've got gooseberries in front of me. They need very little management. I need to give them a basic prune and I might need to mulch them once or twice or just cut around the base a couple of times just to clear the grass growing through. And then it's a case of harvesting. Because they're perennials, I don't need to worry about watering them, even in times of drought. And because perennials are far less hungry than annuals, I don't need to provide extra fertility, hungry fertility, fertility like compost, which is what annuals require. In the category of vegetables in a garden, you have annuals and perennials. Now, of course, there are biannuals, but I'll just put that in the box of annuals for now because that's kind of how they're treated. So I do think purely looking at vegetables, annuals are where you find perhaps the best variety, the best flavour and obviously the best productivity per square metre compared to perennial vegetables. But what you have to understand about annuals is that they're pioneer plants and pioneer plants require lots of fertility they want to grow fast, they want to mature fast, they need to run to seed fast. And so they're very hungry plants. But a perennial is quite different. It'll have a much better root system. It is not trying to reproduce in one go because that's the only opportunity that it has. Perennials have time to form strong connections with their microbiology in the soil, which really helps with nutrient exchange. And so perennials, they don't need compost. You can, you can get away even with planting them without needing compost in almost any case. In my climate, an annual vegetable garden where I'm growing annual plants like this would really struggle without compost. Yes, of course, I can chop and drop and there's many other ways that you can reduce the amount of compost that you need. But in an ideal situation, if you want to get the most from that space, you are going to need compost. So this all means that moving forward, I still need compost, but I don't need as much compost as before. And so within this garden behind me, I reckon the one hotbed that I have and these two compost bins next to me are going to produce more than enough of compost that I need for annuals. And I'm also gonna be doing my own seed sowing mixes, etc., starting next year, because next year is, is the year that I am not gonna let myself ever buy compost again for anywhere on this site. But because a greater proportion of this garden is going to be transitioned into perennials, it means I require less compost, but it also means I have opportunities to bring other phases of fertility over time. For example, a lot more mulching. So now that I've shared the rough idea with how the thinking and how my approach to this, to this site has changed, I'm gonna be sharing with you my short, medium and long-term strategy for how I plan this site to be completely self-sufficient in terms of compost production, but for me to also have that peace of mind to know if I suddenly can't access any external resources, say if like a massive, wall or barrier appeared and I was stuck here, that this garden could still produce for decades to come.
My short-term goals are as follows. Firstly, to put in as many perennials as possible. This is what we've been doing the last few months and it's what we're gonna be doing for at least the next four to six weeks. It is just towards the end of the bare root season. There's still a couple of weeks left and so I've got a lot more to, to try and squeeze in with the time that I have. And then I can continue planting out perennials that are potted. Now, for those of you in the UK, this is not sponsored or anything, but I am collaborating with Frank P. Matthews on a bunch of different projects. This is me from the future, just to say, is the end of the bare root season with Frank P. Matthews and there's still apples available. Currently, they've got 20% off on the site. And if you use the code Hughes Garden, you can get a further 20% off. And I think the cutoff is this weekend. So literally three days after uploading this video. So make sure you get your orders in and it's 20% off the rest of the site as well. So hopefully, that can get you something nice for your garden. And the good thing about bare roots is because they don't come in pots, it is much more affordable to buy. My decision process for the types of perennials to put on this site is to grow less perennial vegetables. There are some that I do think taste really nice, like asparagus, but my main focus is on fruits and particular herbs, but mainly fruits, soft fruits, tree fruits, growing them in one of the polytunnels as well. That has been transitioned into an undercover like mini fruit forest because there's a lot of delight in growing fruits and it's something that I really enjoy and I haven't done enough of in the past. And so now I'm making the most of that opportunity. And so that's the first thing in the short or I would say in the immediate term is putting in as many perennials as I physically can. The medium term strategy involves these very vocal ladies, our chickens. This site here was where the Wi-Fi garden was. This is now going to be turned into a permanent chicken composting setup. So the chickens are gonna have other areas within the site that they can go to, but this is gonna be their permanent home. It's going to be planted up as a kind of a forage forest for them. There's going to be using the gravity, a core way of being able to put all of the plant matter at the top and then by the end at the bottom of the, the flow of nutrients is finished compost. That will then go onto the raised beds that are also behind me here, the, the only other area. Over winter in the only polytunnel where we're gonna be growing annuals, the chickens are gonna be living there as well as being having access to out here, but that's gonna be a deep mulch setup. So all of the compost is produced there over winter, ready for a new growing season. I'm collaborating with Sean from Edible Acres about this project, helping to design the most kind of functional, efficient, but hopefully beautiful chicken compost setup. And the goal is by the end of this year that the majority of this system is all set up and there's a decent volume of compost being produced from this space. And the long-term goal is about generating as much plant biomass as possible to use for either chop or drop or for creating our own wood chip that we can then use as mulch on the site. But also like with ramule chip woods, you can use that for creating hotbeds, which is really useful as well. So this is additional willow. We've been very busy over the past couple of months, putting in loads more willow sticks, willow plugs. We've also opened up a new area as well for that. And so in three or four years, this is gonna be a proper copper system for biomass that we can produce. The lovely thing about perennials is that they're very easy to propagate. I got these cuttings for free from willow that I planted a couple of years ago. And so it's really easy to quickly increase the population. And another example that is part of this long-term strategy is greatly increasing the amount of comfrey that we're producing as well. I know it's a little bit of a, a cliche permaculture plant, but it is popular for a reason. And that is so easy to propagate from division or root cuttings. And so that's also what I'm focusing on a lot as well. So that is in full production within a couple of years. And no, I haven't forgotten the most abundant resource I have access to here on this site. That is grass. So it's not exactly the most suitable material for mulching a lot of the perennials at the moment, just because they're in their infancy stage, they're in their kind of getting going stage. And I like to use wood, such as wood chip, wood shavings, etc., to help encourage that fungally dominated soil. But in two or three years, I do see quite a transition from wood to using grass as the main mulch material for all of the perennials here on the site. 
once they've become a little bit more established. I am doing some interesting projects and experiments here based around grass in particular, and I'll be sharing that over the next few months. I thought the easiest way for you to get a sense of the direction that this is heading in, I would create a very simple sketch. And so on the screen at the moment is a sketch of how the site was at the end of the last growing season. And now in red, you can see all of the additional changes that have happened since then. And the final rendition is where I hope to see this site by June of this year. If you wanna spend five days geeking out about permaculture, kitchen gardens, how to make them productive, how to design them, how to design your space. I'm running this really fun course over at Henbant Permaculture in North Wales. There's a couple of spots left. It's gonna be a really fun full days of blended learning, hands-on, practical theory, inquiring, working on your own projects. There's gonna be a lot of good food as well. So if you wanna find out more, there's a link down below.